How do you start this conversation even? Um... I mean, obviously, by whatever I title this, you'll know. Yeah, you'll know but this what we're is a tougher about. episode. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's tough. But it's also I, like I don't know what I don't know what energy to bring it. We're just talking like what? How do we yeah. how do we address this topic? Usually, we try to have a fun, upbeat conversation, and I'm sure at some points this will be. Yeah. That. Um, but from the title or for whatever, you're gonna know that last month. I got pregnant Mm -hmm. then we lost that pregnancy and then we tried again and we didn't get pregnant, which I was really hoping to. It's kind of like just make it all go away. To try to be on your healing journey past the trauma. Yeah. And I think because I didn't get pregnant right away after a miscarriage, I was like, it just was kind of, eating me up inside in this, in the sense that I, I I felt like I, like I wasn't talking about something that was the only thing I was thinking about. Yeah. And the only thing that we were talking about and we were supposed to record this episode, not this episode, not this conversation, but we were supposed to record an episode on Thursday night. And we felt like. (laughs) We literally couldn't think of anything to talk about (laughs) because this is just, it's been so. It's been the only thing. All consuming. And, you know, and to be really honest with you guys, we've, we've known when we want, like we got pregnant. So we started trying in middle end of May and we've known that we wanted to start trying around that time for like two years, Yeah, like a long (laughs) time, not quite two years, but yeah, maybe not quite a really long time, a really long time. So in a way it has been like our best kept secret that at least we knew we, you know, we knew when we wanted to start trying and yeah. we were kind of, even people who were close to us were like, I don't know, sometime, sometime. next year, sometime, blah, 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 whenever they're asking, of course. And also you might hear thunder, which is kind of par for the course for the, the, vibe, <laughs> for the vibe of the episode. It's a um, little rainy and thundery. Yeah. And Patchouli's with us today mm-hmm. for a little pup comfort. There she is. She's saying, hey, baby. can you, can you, you hear her licks <laughs> in the mic? Anyway, um, so we've known for a minute that we were wanting to try and we got pregnant the first time. Like we yeah. first tried and we got pregnant. I got pregnant. It was like so surprising. Yeah. First of all, it was shocking because we had tried so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we tried so hard. I had had really regular cycles all of this year. And then, you know, we can go more into the details of, of cycles and things like that and trying to conceive maybe in, a, in another episode. Um, but essentially, without going into all those details right this second, my ovulation kept getting pushed and pushed. And we're like, oh my God. <laughs> sex one more day <laughs> like yeah. a, a lot of sex <laughs> um <laughs> and anyway i ended up going to north carolina i didn't expect to get pre- like i i wasn't expecting to get pregnant i still hadn't like ovulated yet and i was like okay well whatever it's just not happening this first month that's fine like that's fine like who it gets that you were, you were able to come around to it uh yeah i wasn't fine but i came around yeah anyway then i had a couple appointments that were booked for the week i ended up testing uh, like acupuncture and like whatever just different things and i was like well let me just like make sure i'm not pregnant mm-hmm. i didn't think i was i hadn't had any symptoms yet well except for like one little thing i like thought i was getting a uti which i never had before so that speaks for itself mm-hmm. it was its own little symptom yeah um but i gotta say though i was kind of calling it the whole he, way uh, he i was. was pretty certain that you were pregnant you were or, i don't know why you i don't were. know why either but like for the whole the whole time. The whole time. He was like, anytime so I would do something funny or weird, he was like, pregnant, <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> but she was doing so many things that were out of character for her that it kind of was obvious. She I was know. just so... Loopy. So pregnant brain. Yeah, but I got even more so once. Like So <laughs> anyway, so nine DPO, nine days post ovulation, um, I tested. And, you know, I didn't, I wasn't recording even at first because I literally just peed on this stick. And I was like, I didn't even like look at it right away like it wasn't I really didn't think it was that serious 
And then I was like, oh my God, there's a line. There's <laughs> there's a little line there. And I was like, oh my God. And I started, yeah. then I picked up my phone and started recording. I was like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. And <laughs> I was like. The video is hilarious. Yeah, because I look atrocious. It's not <laughs> no, I look, I look. Pro- it's, it's funnier to me because that's one of the first things you were thinking about. You were like, this cannot be the video. This no, can't be the video. This can't. No, it's like I kept saying it and, and I was like, this can't be. <laughs> <laughs> Me finding out I'm pregnant. No, oh my God. Anyway, and so then I was like, okay. Um, I took that at like 8.30 in the morning. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait till like, I'm going to go get ready. Mm-hmm. And I had another test with me, like at the house. And I was like, I, I'm going to go put, get myself together a little bit. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I was like, I have a digital. It'll tell me pregnant or not pregnant. Yeah. Literally those words. So I did my makeup. Did my hair, got dressed. So two hours later, I tested again and I videoed from the get at this point. And I was like, okay, talking to the camera saying, you know, I'm only nine DPO. So like e- I even could be pregnant and, and this could say I'm not pregnant and I even still could be pregnant. Who, who even knows really? Yeah. So I'm talking to the camera, talking to my phone, <laughs> whatever, waiting and then pregnant. It says pregnant. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. It was so cute and sweet. And I was like freaking out. And yeah. like, I love those videos, but it's like, I haven't watched them since because I watched them every day. I watched them every day when I was pregnant. Like they were so fun and cute. Mm-hmm. And Adam, I actually told him to come home for lunch the day prior with no, no ulterior motive at all. Had like zero intention yeah. for him to actually come home for lunch for me to tell him. Because like I said, I took that at 1030. And then I was like, hey, Adam, like I said the day before, I was like, I'll make you lunch. Just come home for lunch. Mm-hmm. She's like, literally, like, what, we've done like twice <laughs> yeah, ever. And he came home for lunch. He was on a lunch call meeting, even when he got home. And I'm like, actually dying inside i'm like hurry please end this phone call like i can't believe you were able to wait i I can't believe you were like you weren't like jeff get off the phone i like couldn't yeah so i'm like so nervous and after he gets off the phone i'm like i want to do this tiktok with you i taught him the tiktok and which she's done plenty times never like over a lunch break because i don't always come home for lunch because it's so quick but like I'm like, but sometimes yeah, like but I'm like spur of the moment. I'm, I'm like, like, oh my okay, god, great. I have She's this in the thing. Right I want energy. We're here for lunch. Like, I want to post it. Whatever. Yeah. And I'm always here for a good time. So I set it up. I teach him it. I, <laughs> it's on TikTok too. So I literally have the sound up and I could and not ready, get it ready for timer. No, no, but ready. Like I had to get it ready for the timer to be like, okay, this is what it sounds like. Timer yeah. three, two, one. But right the last second when I put it up and Adam's like settling his his body, uh. <laughs> I click. X on the sound, you know, if you're on TikTok, you know, you have to just, it's like on the top of the screen. I click X to make sure that the sound goes away <laughs> so that I click timer three, two, one, and it goes and nothing's happening. And I literally pull the pregnancy and test. I was just like, I'm like, I'm not hearing the sound happen. It's not happening. So I'm like looking at the screen. I'm like, what's wrong with this thing? But it was very quick. Like it wasn't like he wasn't actually looking <laughs> But I did not notice her pulling out a pregnancy test. Yeah. And I did. And I surprised him. And it's like a whole 10 minute video. And it's so sweet and like, yeah, so cute. And we were on cloud nine. Mm-hmm. We were just so surprised. <laughs> so surprised. I was shocked. <laughs> I was so surprised. I was so surprised. Like that video is so cute to me because Adam ends up like tearing up and like. I'll always cry. He'll something. always cry. And I'll, I, I, I was like, I was in shock. Like I was. I think you were in shock at the fact that this was the video of you telling your husband you're pregnant. Yeah, I was, t- I was in shock. <laughs> I, yeah, anyway. And the whole thing's so sweet. And so that was <laughs> on a Monday. And I tested every single day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I was like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, like I just wanted to test. I think on Wednesday or Thursday, I actually made Adam pee on a stick. Because they, <laughs> cause all my tests came back positive. And I was like... I just couldn't believe I was pregnant. Like, whatever. But I think part of... There was like something in me that was so unsure because it was like on Wednesday or something. So like I said, I took it on a Monday. Mm -hmm. And then on Wednesday, one of the tests, because I had lots of them at the house at this point. um, One of the tests was another like line one. 
And I was like, okay, that's like not showing up like at like all. It was such a light blue it line. It was so light that I was like, I don't, I feel like I don't even see a line. So like I kind of panicked. So then I took another like digital one, which the ones that we had were like extra sensitive and blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, okay, that one said pregnant. Like we're good. I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm, like it's mm-hmm. fine. These other ones just suck. Like whatever. Yeah. And we'll go back to that. I'll go back to that. But anyway, there was something in me that I was like, I felt like not pregnant enough. Mm-hmm. Mind you, I did start getting symptoms the day that I tested on Monday. Like I started that day. I literally, I was like peeing every 45 minutes. <laughs> so like, much. Like no joke. Every 45 <laughs> minutes I was peeing. So then that um, started. And um, I had, then I had like slight like cramps and they're, they're different from menstrual cramps, but they're like down there. And I had it a little bit on that Monday. Definitely had it Tuesday. Definitely had it Wednesday. And then I think Wednesday had had the most symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also had it on Thursday a little bit. Um, all those days I tested, all those days with the digital, I it was said very glaringly pregnant. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I made Adam pee on a stick at one point and <laughs> it said not check. pregnant because I just had to make sure. Mm-hmm. I had to... Fair. Had to make sure. So anyway, Thursday night, I go to bed really irritable. I like, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah, we had recorded a podcast that night. Yeah. And I just was so hot. And like, I just, I just felt off. Mm -hmm. And I went to bed very like upset. I don't really know why. I just did. And that night, I dreamt that I was bleeding. Mm -hmm. And then... I woke up all uh, throughout the night. I woke up thinking like, I don't have any cramps. And and every single night, my cramps had gotten like more and more. Mm -hmm. And again, they're, they're, they're like menstrual cramps, but they're different. It's more like a pinch. And like, I think I thought they were like just good signs and who knows which direction it was. I I don't know. But I noticed that Thursday night, I didn't have any cramps. Yeah. Like none. And because every other night prior to that, your ring had told you that you had bad sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah, I was like, up a lot. Yeah. And temperature was weird. T- and Thursday night, I actually slept more and I woke up and my temperature had dropped. And I was like, between the period or sorry, between the bleeding dream, no cramps and the low temperature, I knew something. I was like, this isn't good. Like something I like panicked and we wake up at six mm-hmm. and I had Adam, we had literally just run out of pregnancy tests the day before. Yeah. We were like, okay, that's enough. I that's finally enough on Thursday was like chill. Like yeah. I finally was like, okay, I am good. <laughs> um, so I made him go find a place that had pregnancy tests at six 30 in the morning. He came back I immediately tested and it said not pregnant. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it was horrible. Cause I just like knew that that was correct. Yeah. Because I just like every, everything I like felt like I just knew it was like, I dreamt I was bleeding. Like I just like, and your dreams have always been very accurate for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I can always tell when a dream is like specifically a prophetic dream. Like I dream about random shit, like everybody does, but then yeah. there are times that it's like, it feels different. It feels Mm -hmm. like it's telling me something Yeah. versus me experiencing something. It's like, it feels just direct. I don't know how to explain it, but anyway, my dad also has like prophetic dreams. So, um, yeah. It wasn't even like tears right away. It was just No, it wasn't. I, I was numb. It was just like, yep, that's what I thought. And then Adam left and then I broke down. It, yeah, it was horrible. That's horrible. Um, And I was going to actually tell my sister that day that I was pregnant. I had the whole Mm -hmm. thing planned. She was already planning on coming over. She was already planning on coming over. We had a big fun day. We had a rebrand for our radio show. We were going to do a photo shoot Mm -hmm. and a show. And I was going to tell her while we were recording. Yeah, we had a whole plan on how we had talked about it literally the night before how you were going to tell her. And like trying to come up with creative ways. I had been thinking about it all week. Like the moment I got pregnant, basically, I was like, we got to can't wait to tell Adam. And then like the first next thought was like, I'm so like, I can't wait to tell Brooke. Like, you're like, how am I going to tell her? How am I going to tell her? And so anyway, so I was, I was looking forward to Friday because then as soon as I tell Brooke, I was like, 
it's even more real because right now it's mm-hmm. like it's like our secret our secret and whatever so anyway it was so like heart-wrenching gut-wrenching and i texted my actually first i i called my mom because hmm. i was like sobbing when adam had to go back to work oh wait I had, had to, to go to work, to work. Morning. Mm-hmm. and and mind you like the whole the whole week we were like I mean, truly like buzzing, like so happy. So this was like such a drop. <laughs> um, I called my mom and she's like, hey, and I immediately just cried. She knew. Yeah, she had already been asking. And she just knew, she, I mean, she just knew like, what am I crying? Like, yeah. what do I cry about these days? Like, there's nothing that I'm going to call sobbing about. Yeah. Like, unless like it's like a tragedy but at that point i'd be like more hysterical i was more just like couldn't speak and i was just like crying and yeah so uh that was hard too because i wanted to surprise my parents like Mm. i wanted to oh so we had a plan because we were going to our family beach trip just like a couple a couple weeks later and um unfortunately i just had to tell my mom by telling her I was having a miscarriage. Yeah. And by the way, I haven't said it yet, but technically what it's called is a chemical pregnancy. And they only call it that because you are pregnant, but you never got far enough along to have a doctor's appointment. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally like what that means. Like, like a doctor didn't confirm it, but like you were pregnant. So anyway, that's all. Yeah. That's all that means. Um, and I like recorded a little video on TikTok. It's still in my drafts. I'm sure I'll, I don't know. I don't even know what I'll do with it, but, um, we also had been vlogging. Mm-hmm. We so just started finally we doing We had that. just started vlogging. It's something I'd been wanting to pick up again. And I was like, what better time than I'm pregnant? And like, yeah, like let's start telling this story. Yeah. So, and obviously, obviously a pregnancy comes with so many dreams and it comes with so much like purpose and it comes with so much like grounding and nesting and, wanting to create something and so obviously all those things kind of go hand in hand and it just really felt like it was meant to be yeah like obviously the first time you get like you try to get pregnant like you hope to get pregnant like that's the yeah. hope that's yeah of course. you're like if you have if you could pick a perfect timeline that's when you start trying you know like yeah so we were like oh my god it's perfection like like who gets to get pregnant on the first gets try to be so lucky yeah. And yeah, so we, we do have the whole thing, like not the whole thing, because different aspects of it, like vlogged, like we did talk to the camera and we wanted to update something like mm-hmm. in the moment um, and not just be like, we're pregnant. Like we wanted to capture our little moments and we did. And so I think I will put it together. I think I will put it up on my YouTube channel. I'll keep you posted. But um, obviously if you're seeing this too, like listening to this as well, you saw my post probably on my social media, which is something I recorded yesterday, which anyway, doesn't really matter. Um, I had just decided that we wanted to talk about it. But anyway, I I don't want to like lose track. I think the other thing I wanted to mention was um, I also made an appointment like that same day I found out. Yeah. So I made my first. It would have been an ultrasound. Ultrasound appointment um and it was gonna be the day before we left for the family trip so i was gonna have an ultrasound whatever it's called little pictures yeah and confirmation and get a due date and like i was like all that what all that was like it was planned Mm -hmm. and obviously i had to call them and be like just kidding cancel it like what it was yeah you're like what do i do i don't it was so I don't uncomfortable know. i was like in so much pain <laughs> like emotionally telling them because they're and they're like i'm so sorry on the phone and i was like i'm going to lose it talking to them because i called them the day of because i that's just who i am like i mm, i'm trying to sit and wait i have to just change it all that second so anyway i ended up keeping the appointment but changing it to like a regular gyno mm-hmm Getting a checkup as it's kind of happening. Yeah. So the day that I woke up and I tested negative, it was a Friday. I started miscarrying like that afternoon, like 
started mm-hmm. spotting that afternoon was full on bleeding that night. Um, and it was really painful in all the ways, like obviously emotionally, but also like physically there's a lot more than just like nutrient blood that you shed on a period. It's like mm-hmm. more tissue. And that obviously. was really sad. And that was really sad because it was just, I mean, it's, I mean, whatever. It was the it was thing thick. that your body was building. Yeah, it was thick. And yeah. my whole, all my senses felt like it was different. Like, and not to be just gruesome, but also this is like, this is, that this is my platform. <laughs> so I could say whatever the fuck I want. But, um, yeah, like it smelled different. Like it was just more raw. Like I don't even know how to explain it. Like it just, it was fresh. It was fresh. Your um, body, whether it was your the way you smelled it or the way you sensed it or the way you felt it, like it was just you very knew fresh. It was different. And just like I called Adam yeah. in when I first started like heavy bleeding that night, just to be there with you. Yeah, I made him look at it because I was like, I'm looking at it. It's different mm-hmm. than a period. Yeah, like in a way it was like that's our baby. Yeah. And that's hard. Yeah. Um But I think and not that not that there's a reason that we were started recording and lost a baby, but like I think it's a it's a conversation that people don't have often enough within the actual journey of it. And the thing is that we've always tried to do is share authentically. And I think we've always tried to be talking, having conversations in the midst of pain, in the midst of change, in the midst of like everything that's really happening in our lives. And I think we tried to wait we tried to be on the on the healed side of things before we started having this conversation publicly because that's what's easier and that's what's a lot of people expect from from us but like it also is just like it's difficult to find out afterward that it is really common to have miscarriages it's like one in four pregnancies is a chemical pregnancy and it happens to a lot of people and people a lot of people don't know You either end up, you either end up having your pregnancy work the first time that you get pregnant or you don't. And then you just hear about people who are like eight to 10 months into their journey, their pregnancy journey, like trying to conceive, trying to conceive. And they're like all the way down the road. And I don't know what our story is going to look like, but at least we want to start sharing when we're two months, two months into the journey so that maybe every single video that somebody sees that's looking into their conception journey doesn't only see that it's got to be eight to 10 months long. Maybe ours will be three. Maybe ours will be four. Maybe ours will be somewhere in between. But like, I just, I think it's, it's the most natural thing for us to, to have the conversations that we're actually having in real life here on the podcast. Like I said, like it had gotten to the point where like Thursday, Adam and I were supposed to record and we're like, what the fuck do we talk about? Like, seriously, I don't care. Like nothing else is like really happening. Like we ha- we're we busy. Like we have our, nor- like our lives, like Adam's busy. I'm busy, mm-hmm. but like, I'm not going to talk about our jobs on the podcast. Like that's, yeah, th- this is what we're talking about. We're like, when he and I are having conversations, when we're going out, when we're like, Anything we're researching and anything we're like actually excited about is this. Like, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. And to be honest, it's kind of been what we've talked about even before we got pregnant. And it was like getting to the point where we're like, oh my God. Like, we're, we're close to the season of being pregnant. So we're excited to talk about that too. Cause we hadn't ever talked about that even. Yeah. Like how deep you go into so much research and how obsessed you've been over pregnancy since I've known you. Yeah. My like basically my whole life. And it's an aspect that I did. I do like want to bring out. Like I know so much about (laughs) like women's bodies and female reproductive system and like hormones are so fascinating to me. Like, and now I'm in this trying to conceive journey and it's like, now I'm like, like I I've been on taking a preconception, like like vitamin pack for months (laughs) at this point that I haven't shared ever. Like I, I've been avoiding sharing that. And so in a way this is like nice because 
I feel like I can actually just like say why it is I'm I'm making sure I eat enough fat protein and fiber like it's not just for my health but it's because I'm on this journey and I've been thinking about it I went like if you listen to one of our episodes like a while back I went vegan or non-vegan because I was getting my body ready to have a baby and that was in May of 2023 Mm -hmm. when we went unvegan I've been thinking about this and prepping for this for a year for for since the the previous May. So it's kind of nice that I'm able to like talk about it. We're talking, we're able to talk about it. I think we have to like, as I was even saying earlier today that like, I don't think that you can, you shushing yourself over anything Mm -hmm. is only going to shut you down for everything. Like, I don't know that, I don't know that you can be in a place where you have such a, huge thing in your life that you're not talking about and actually have any sort of other authentic conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I love sharing my special interests no matter what they are. And of course this has been my special interest for a hot minute, but especially right now, especially now. I mean, and now I know like so many words I never knew before. Like I've been on the, I've been on the TTC, like (laughs) TikToks, like deep, into all the world and now i know what like bfp means it means big fat positive cute like big fat negative i know what that like i know what i know what baby dance means on tiktok like (laughs) there's so many things i'm like in a world that like i hadn't talked about at all like i was existing in a world that nobody knew i was existing in and even that felt weird here's i do want to land on this like specifically i I have a very, very small community, (laughs) like in real life. We do like, Mm -hmm. I feel like oftentimes like maybe people assume like there's more people around us, but like my sister and like, we have like one or two other people, like it's really, really tight knit. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of my friends, that I once had, even through deconstruction, a lot of those girls, like I'm basically not friends with like, like like, not in the same capacity, not the same capacity Mm -hmm. period. And then also only with two of them now. And again, not even to the same capacity. And it's like the people who've been actually been able to be there for me slash for us has been very limited, very limited. And even those people, that's a lot of pressure on them. They don't even really know fully how to be there. And it's like, I don't, I never expect a whole lot from anyone anyway. So it's like, I don't know. And what the point I'm trying to make is I have had an online community for years now. There are people, there are some of you who listen to this that I talk to more than I talk to anyone else in my life, except for Adam. Like there are some of you that I talk to every single day on Instagram, (laughs) like for real for real and you know who you are and I consider that community and I consider you and I consider those people my friends and I know I can literally think of specific like (laughs) people on in, in their Instagram personas but that's who they are like mm-hmm. i can picture them and i i, I know i'm going to feel supported by them like yeah. when i talk about this when i post the videos like i know i'm going to have that support and that's going to feel good and i don't think that's wrong to want to have support from people and community that i know that would that wants to be there for me mm-hmm. and i have not allowed myself to to express what's going on in our lives because I were taught to not talk about like people don't even announce pregnancies until they're past 13 weeks. Like, yeah, I don't, I, I get it, but I, but I don't get that. Like, it's kind of a rule. Like it's kind of like this society culture. You kind of lose out on your entire support system through a time. That's actually really Scary. It doesn't, uh, to me, in my personality, that doesn't make sense. Because eventually, if I lose it, if I lose a pregnancy or not, like, 
I will be talking about it eventually. Why not have the support when I'm going through it? Like that doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me because when I go for my first appointment, when one day I get pregnant, like (laughs) I'm going to be very nervous and like, I'm going to be going through a lot. And I guess I could just post a meme being like, how are you? I don't know. But like, I want to be honest about what I'm going through. Like, it just doesn't make sense for me personally to not talk about it. Yeah. And I don't know how direct I'm going to be. I don't know if I'm going to tell y'all on the day of, like, if you're on my social media, like, go through this day and go through that day. Some posts may be delayed as I do want to also have sweet moments, like, with family and tell people and whatever. Yeah. And, like, maybe after this, I'll get really private again. I don't know, but that's my prerogative. Like, that's Mm -hmm. up to us, you know. But I I did feel like not talking about it was making this way harder yeah. on me. And I was feeling stuck. Well, and I think even just not talking about it in this space made you feel like you couldn't share it with anybody. Like, yeah. I just know that. It just felt like I was supposed to be embarrassed about it. There's just like, I think there's still so much of, and I, I know we talked about this a little bit, but there's a lot of the purity culture mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. kind of spills over into the idea of having to show up especially in the Christian music industry with a testimony of how you were healed from the trauma after you've already healed from the trauma and you're never supposed to talk about it until you're there. It, it and that didn't it's like something about that didn't settle well with me because of what I had, we had like existed in for so long that like, Oh, I'm just supposed to get pregnant. And then I'll tell you guys, I lived through so much pain. Yeah. Like until when, right, and that just puts so much pressure on, So much more pressure on getting pregnant. Yes. And I was finding that that was what was happening for me was that I was like, oh my God, like let's get pregnant this time so I can finally talk about it. So I can finally tell people. And that's not fair to anyone. No. And that's, and that's, it's not fair to the people, to the people who listen to this either, the people who are your friends online that actually are willing and wanting to support you. Yeah. That you are not only not allowing them to support you, but you're also casting them in a light of somebody who would judge you for. Right. For having trauma, for being in the midst of something that's really difficult and needing support. Yeah. And so all of this brought up so much for me. And I was like, I'm just, I'm just so like ready for a new era of just like saying the truth. And of course there are things in our lives that we've gone through things that have involved other people that have been drama and like things that of course I'm not going to talk about on the podcast. I'm not going to like air out every single thing I'm as much as you may think that I'd share everything. I definitely don't um, because I have boundaries for the people in my life, but this was specifically me and you and we were okay with talking about this, but we felt like we weren't allowed to. And I was like, according to who? Yeah. Like, why aren't we talking about this? We've talked about everything else while in the journey. And I, I'm so glad that we're finally talking about this. Yeah. Because it, this is what this was for. This is the conversations we've always been having. Yeah. And I hope it helps somebody else that's listening to this too. That's also in the same journey because like from day one, this whole podcast has, it's not been about building a platform and doing a thing. It's been about a shout into the void of a space that we don't see support or we don't find support for ourselves. And we just kind of say, Hey, this is what we're going through. And yeah. are you out there and are you experiencing something similar? Yeah. Personally, I know I've loved finding and following people who are trying to conceive. And so I don't know, maybe our listeners, maybe some of you guys are, or even are just interested in that journey because like I, I wasn't trying to conceive until May, but I was always interested in people's journeys. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is just fascinating to you. I've got lots of things that I'm doing. Lots of like, we have all these like vitamin in like Oh, we've got routines. so much. T- there's, <laughs> there's so much that surrounds just this trying to conceive. We have so the many things. The TTC journey. Like I'm literally having a glass of wine and it's like truly like what? The third glass of wine I feel like I've had. All year. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like kind of crazy. We were in a preparation season before and now we're like, you know what? A glass now of Now I got to calm down. Now I'm yeah. just like, mm, I got to chill. Um, because everything was, it was just a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. So I'm proud of you. I'm proud of us. Proud of you. Yeah. Um. 
I'm like ready to be like really authentic and yeah, embrace this new season. I'm excited to have something that we get to share with you guys online too. Like, yeah, and I, I feel like we've with... been having conversations about things peripherally that we've kind of had questions about and things that we're interested in. But like since deconstruct kind of fell to the wayside because we came out of our deconstruction season, like we haven't something had something that we were in process in and sharing online. Besides, besides going non-vegan, but that's like, okay, one episode. Yeah, sure. You're like, like who cares? I, I, look, like, I started eating meat again. Ha like, ha ha. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> ready. <laughs> it is, that's it. Diet change. Yeah. You, like we weren't going to take you along on like, I don't actually know how to cook meat on the barbecue. <laughs> Which was funny. What, we figured it we out. We figured it out really fast. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like, it's like, this is the next biggest thing. And like Adam had mentioned, and I thought it was a really good point. Like we record in real time. Like we're recording this on Saturday. This episode goes out on Monday. Mm -hmm. I recorded my video that I'm going to be posting tomorrow, which is Sunday on Friday. Like I, and that's like prepping. Like I, like it was hard. It was like hard for me to not post it in that very the moment. The only reason she didn't post it in the moment is because she wanted to talk to me first and make sure that I was comfortable with us sharing yeah. all of this. And we're very just like in the moment in real time. And I feel like this brings yeah. us back to that. Yeah. You know, back when we, we were deconstruct, when we would have guest interviews, like we were discovering things constantly. Well, not just that, but we would record it in the episode, that conversation routinely this is how it always worked mm -hmm. is that conversation would go up the following week yeah like it was it was a routine now granted it was covid and everyone was available yeah. and everyone <laughs> could talk on monday and everyone could you know it's like and everybody was deconstructing their faith because they were stuck in a house alone by themselves it was perfect. yeah it was perfect it was a perfect storm and that's something i try to remind myself too because only the real homies are the ones listening to curio city these days yeah that's just facts the people who actually care about us and talk yeah. to us online. It's not about the... We found our friends. Yeah. And we're really, really fortunate that we have. Yeah. And you guys are our friends. Like, seriously, the people I talk to, like, online, and you guys, like I said, know who you are because I talk to you every day. We have conversations about y'all's conversations. Seriously, like... Like, that is a lot of the things that we actually talk about in person, so... Like, you guys know, I screenshot our conversations. It's as if she like, goes to, like, lunches all day with people. Yeah. It feels like that. It really feels like that. So, um, is there anything else you want to kind of say about this experience? I don't know if there's anything else about the experience right now, but I do just, like, want to say thank you, guys, for being a support system that we know that we can actually find peace with that we can find support in like it makes me so grateful to know that like lauren's gonna be in her dms and she's going to feel cared for like that's huge to me and i just want to say thank you guys for that well, yeah <laughs> you can send adam sweet messages too you can i might not respond to them he but. he he probably won't respond but they'll mean a lot to him so you can still send them. Um, okay. <laughs> we're getting emotional again. Again. <laughs> I'm crying again. Oh, God. So we're going to end this here, I think. We're um, probably going to cry a lot more on the podcast. So <laughs> yeah, whatever. Because it's in real time. Um, clearly not pregnant <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, yeah, my cycles have been weird. The cycles we started are weird. Trying. Um, so who knows? But Look, we're doing different things. Wish us it's luck. It's going to change your cycles. Wish us luck. I really want to get pregnant as soon as we can. That's the hope. Yeah. <laughs> but. Thanks for being homies along the way. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for listening. We love you guys. Uh -huh. And until next time. Bye. bye.